Hello, it's me, Danielle Carmelita, your favorite and go-to tarot reader and astrologer. Let's talk about the vibe in the sky for the week. Also, I'm going to go into Venus energy. I'm going to explain that in detail. <laughs> eclipse we are going to talk about the moon and that energy in the next video which will most likely be tomorrow so look out for that if you want to learn about tarot i have a free pdf that teaches you how to do tarot so go ahead and click the link for that i also have a free reading for you click the link for that as well oh also sign up for my newsletter in the future i see that um, I have to be in charge of our interactions and not social media. So I would like to have the power in my hands. So if you are a follower, a subscriber, or just love to stay in contact with me, please sign up for my newsletter so I can keep in touch and I can have the power in my hands. Let's get started on this video. What is the vibe in the sky for the week? What, the hor what are the horoscopes for you? I will put a screenshot or put the dates up of everything. Um, today is Monday, so this video should be up today. If the universe and uh, technology during this pre-shadow phase of Mer Mercury retrograde will allow that. Um, but today Venus enters Gemini. I'm going to go and that's really going to be at nighttime. So really going to feel it the next day, April 11th. And um, April 11th, um, not only do we have Venus entering Gemini, new energy, but we also have the sun conjunct Jupiter in Aries so that means that it is in the heart of the sun so you're really going to feel that energy um, April 11th we also have Venus in Gemini in Gemini and it is trine Pluto in Aquarius okay and then April 14th and uh Again, I will do the next weekly transits next Monday, but April 14th, we have Venus um, in Gemini. Again, Venus, this is all about Venus here this week, but it's squaring Saturn, which is in Pisces. Also in the previous horoscope video of April uh, horoscopes, I also went into Saturn and how that affects you because I didn't do a Saturn in Pisces uh, horoscopes. Um, and also too, we have a Saturn that's in Pisces, sextile our North Node, in Taurus that also happens Friday okay so let's talk about Venus energy shall we okay it gets it's going to get interesting here okay so Venus first of all um, goes into this sign for like two to three weeks if it's in retrograde it will last five months if you see me looking down, I have to tell you, I am looking at my notes. I want you to get all the details. And sometimes when I run on a tangent, I forget like, oh, I should have mentioned this. So um, that's why I'm looking down. I want to make sure you get it all. Okay. Venus, it affects us not, you know, not as long as a Saturn energy. Okay. So um, it comes pretty qu quick and briefly. Um, and it's a moving, it's a fast moving planet. Okay. Um, hence why when you're in your birth chart, um, Venus and Mars and um, Mercury, it's all really personal to you. It's a personal planet, um, in what they call in astrology. Um, their effects sometimes may be felt um, no more than a day when you have Venus energy and um, they are pleasant and easy to deal with for the most part. Um, Venus is a yin planet, which means that it's a negative energy planet, which means earth and water, which also means inward energy and um, more receptive inwardly and not outwardly. You're more concerned with uh, feelings and how you are, um, how you feel versus the external energy like positive energy is more um a self-expression right and and it also deals with fire and air very external energy more introverted energy is more to describe venus um venus draws things that uh, uh draws things towards you and things that you attract is what you get when you deal with venus and the reason i'm explaining this is because i'm going to go over to horoscopes and do tarot as well venus is also love and there's love affair when you talk about Venus, the planet. Venus can also, um, Venus cannot make long-term relationships, okay, by themselves. You need some extra transits and some extra placements and aspects to deal with that. Um, but they do signify 
um, good times within the existing relationship. That is what we get when we have this transit. Um, so like if you're married and you've been married for a long time, Venus hits a certain house for certain aspects. It could be a, a great, amazing time. Um, friendships are also good under a Venus transit. Venus is good for financial matters too because Venus is the ruler of Taurus. Taurus is all about money. So you get that energy with Venus. It attracts money and beauty, basically. It also attracts creativity, okay? So um, when you're working properly, Venus always uh, creates spiritually on a higher level, than the original entity or original energy that you're dealing with. So it always works and it works really well with the, the power of Mars, okay? Because Mars is driving and you're pursuing and then Venus is attracting um, yin and yang, okay? Um, energy and at the same time, you wanna have that balance with uh, Mars. So you basically need Mars to have Venus because Venus is attracting, but how are you pursuing? How are you getting the energy? And also it's like masculine and feminine, okay? All those words are very important. I know they want to change the English um, language, but um, just remember it if they take it away, okay? <laughs> Hold the knowledge. I even um, bought an old dictionary. Very interesting, the words that have changed. I understand words evolve, but it's interesting of deleting certain words. Anyway, that was a tangent. Let's go back on track. Um, Venus also brings things together in a passive manner. Again, because you're not dealing with that Mars, you're dealing with uh, a Venus energy. So you are unnat like unintentionally attracting things. It's just naturally coming to you, right? Um, but just like no effort is the energy with Venus. Um, this is also energy of being soft and very luxurious. Venus also, on one hand, can make people lazy right? They think like, oh, it comes to me naturally. What do I have to do the work for? You know, I don't need to work for this. So that is what you kind of get on the negative side of Venus. And Venus is a social planet. So um, when it's dealing with some social aspects, wow, okay, Aquarius energy in Venus, um, Mercury, Mercury in Venus, um, what else we have? Um, there's a lot, but I'm just like, oh, Pisces even is beautiful with Venus. Okay, whatever. I just ran off again. Um, parties and entertaining with Venus is really big. Ooh, uh, Leo energy is big with Venus and the fifth house is big with Venus. Anyway, um, parties and entertaining are best under this transit. Um, Venus loves to bring happy social occasions. Um, Venus with Saturn gets interesting. Venus with Neptune gets interesting too and can produce some delusions with love and relationships, right? And Saturn limits us, um, but it kind of works with it. You may think it's negative, but it works with it as well. Okay, so um, that is Venus in a nutshell, right? Um, let's talk about Venus and Gemini. What does that mean, right? You have a Gemini, which is very playful and um, it's all about the intellect and communication. Mm, I love that part because I have Mars and Venus and Gemini. So this is all like, ooh, I'm excited. Um, it's very curious. It's very quick. Um, and it's constantly um, juggling Gemini the energy. Okay, not Venus and Gemini, just Gemini alone. Um, very uh, multitasking, can focus on more than one thing. Um, variety of passions, hobbies, careers, friendships. Love to learn, love to teach what they learn. That is what you get when you have the energy of Gemini. So what does it mean when Venus enters Gemini for the collective? It basically means we have the finger in every pie. We can do it all, okay? Very curious. Curiosity motivates us. Even when it comes to romantic endeavors and social activities, you're very curious. Like, hmm, I wonder what that social group is doing over there. You know what? I think I'm gonna attend that party because you're curious. That's what the energy you have. Variety of spice of life is also the energy you get with the Venus and Gemini. I'm very social, very communicative, very charming, um, very interested in things. Um, we also keep things at a distant level when it comes to emotions, because Gemini is like, what, what emotions? What are we talking about? We don't have time for that. Um, okay. Um, attraction now often begins with words because be, um, Gemini is all about their words and communication and um, also tends to bond more on a level of mentality and mental level and, um, intellectual you really want to talk to the person and really get to know them and um 
I find it to be very amazing, but you know, everyone's different because of course, again, my Venus and Mars is in Gemini. Um, we're most attracted to mental, mentally interesting people with this energy. Sometimes uh, curio curiosity leads us into relationships we may not otherwise entertain. You may get that with the Venus and, and um, Gemini. The shadow side of Gemini is that it gets a little fickle, right? It gets disinterested real quick because they're only like, oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. That is a Gemini um, energy that you get. Um, you ask questions and want to keep things light and lively. You don't really want to get dark and um, Pluto energy. No, 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 no. Let's keep it light. Let's keep it lively. Let's keep talking. This is fun. Okay. Um, mentally engaged is all what you want to get. You want to be socially stimulating. Um, it's going to be very appealing with that energy and good fortune with transportation and communication is also great when you're dealing with Venus and Gemini. Just like I imagine Venus and Gem Venus and Gemini really works great with being on a train and just looking through the window at beautiful sights. That works well with Venus and Gemini, okay? Um, but let me talk about some other transits of the week. April 11th, we have the Sun conjunct Jupiter in Aries, and it is a Kazemi, meaning Kazemi is the heart of the sun, so it's really in there, right? And um, conjunct means that they share the same sign. So it's double the energy of Aries, the sun, which is our life, our ego, Jupiter, which is all about expansion, expansion and optimism and faith. Um, what else? Abundance is what we get for our Jupiter. Um, very positive energy. And now the sun is just highlighting that positive energy. So you'll feel good physically and psychologically. Um, very optimistic, like I said earlier. Very um, positive outlook on life. Um, consciously and unconsciously, you'll want to include um, as much as possible because you're going to want to experience as much life as possible with this transit. Intellectually, this energy can signify study because you deal with Jupiter also deals with philosophy and wanting to learn things and studying things. You're going to want to have all kinds of experience. Um, traveling is a big thing. Getting out and experience things that are out of your normal cultural culture experience is what you'll get. Um, it can be large and very generous energy, um, but it can also be arrogant and domineering. And depending on your subconscious dealing with others, be aware of that. You don't want to be too controlling. I find um, Sagittarius energy, which is Jupiter, which is ruled by Jupiter, to be very um, bossy and controlling. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, they're open and they want to learn things, but very matter of fact of uh, micromanaging is kind of the energy you get. Um, overall, it's a very positive experience, transit. So be aware of that. Just be careful of the domineering energy. Um, Venus is going to trine uh, Pluto tomorrow as well. And again, we went over Venus and um, trine means more like it's going to go with, in a flow with uh, Pluto and Pluto, um, which is an Aquarius is, is all rebellion, but Pluto is about transformation. It's about destruction and renewal, tearing it down to make something great and beautiful. It's kind of the description of you get what you get with Pluto and, um, it's trining. They're going to go flow. They're going to flow with each other. So what does that mean? Okay. Um, you're going to create greater need to belong to an individual or a group because we're dealing with Aquarius energy. Friendships are very, uh, important to you with this energy. Um, and the friendships may transform your life with that energy. Okay. Um, they may change your life and it, it will become more intense physically, sexually. Also, you get with a Pluto energy. Um, so sexually you'll have a transformation and, um, the word would be transcendent. Okay. Um, it's a good time to try to understand your emotions and how they affect you. Um, any emotions you can feel that day tomorrow, um, you will have extra force. It would be, um, more intense is the word really that I want, should have wrote down and that I'm trying to say, um, which could mean the same in the relationships. Oh, if you enter a relationship that day, it will be transformative. If you meet someone that day, a love interest tomorrow, that's going to be very transformative, very intense energy. Pluto still expects you to be aware of the red flags, okay? And to see the warning signs and to walk away when 
it's not working, okay? Because Pluto energy goes beyond the surface. It's not just going to be surface level of Venus with it like, oh, everything's beautiful, everything's gorgeous, and this is all just, let's just experience the pleasantries of life. Pluto's like, mm, no, let's go deeper, okay? That is great. I love this, but let's go even deeper with this energy. So that's what you get on the 11th. On the 14th of April, Venus is going to square, which is in Gemini still, is going to square Saturn in Pisces. I, like I said earlier, I discussed that energy, um, but squaring is very hot-headed energy, and um, it's dealing with conflict when you have uh, two planets squaring each other. And, um, Tensions are present between the two planets and they also share the same mode. So here we have Pisces and Gemini. So they're both mutable signs and Saturn is all about concentration and limitation and restriction and rules and authority and ambition and tenacity, um, productivity, uh, task master, task mask, master, um, caution, delay, um, limitation, I said there, also responsibility, um, rules and regulation, pain, fear, authority, discipline, control, and denial, okay? Tangible results and performance. I mean, Saturn gets deep, okay? <laughs> so when you have Saturn and um, when it's squaring our beautiful Venus, love and affection are extremely tempered and very practical. Um, sometimes under this transit, you'll ask an older person for advice because again, it's also dealing with authority figures. Um, and you'll probably ask them advice for your relationships, reflecting about the state of life and your relationships. Um, you can also signify saying goodbye to a loved one either because of the temporary situation or because of the breakup, because um, Saturn also can represent ending something, right? Your actions are characterized by restraint, because remember we have a uh, limitation here, which usually is good if you have to recognize the limitations of your pocketbook. So money, remember, also deals with Venus and Saturn squaring that is like, what the hell are you doing with your pocketbook? Why are you spending so much? And that will probably bring some awareness. Something's going to show to let you know you're spending too much money. Um, also can it indicate difficulties with your love life? Um, you may feel not feel warm or affectionate and alienate yourself from loved ones. And you may seem a little too difficult with this, and, and, um, with this energy. A relationship that comes under this transit may live a long life, but won't be a flossy one, okay? It'll be very practical. Um, so some people may think that's boring, but um, that is the energy with that transit. Now you have Saturn Pisces, um, again, and it's sextile the North Node, and that the North Node is in Taurus. And the North Node... Um, describes what you're meant to accomplish in this lifetime. South node is the opposite. Ooh, there's a wasp on my window. Um, south node is the opposite and it represents you're still carrying from your past and your past life, right? Okay, anyway, but back to the north node because the north node is sextile Pisces and the north node sextile Pisces often helps lift away some problems with the Saturn limitations and restrictions. It increases patience and practicality and increases good relationships with elders and authorities, right? And um, people of uh, restriction, uh, like if you, the police or anyone in a uniform, that will help you with that. Um, there's a good sense of timing as to when to approach people with this energy. There are often many connections with older people, um, maybe even family, people who are father figures, male energy is really good with this energy. Um, especially if you need assistance with knowledge and understanding, you need to develop more self-reliance with this energy. Um, and also it helps you with guidance with the uh, guardianship of the family. Um, you may be approaching maturity with this energy. It helps you in, uh, and learn to take responsibility. The cosmos has lent you this extra bit of assistance. Um, I love that. And um, self-discipline is one of the strongest and most positive energy that you're going to get from this transit. Um, when organizing, you're going to be very patient, um, very methodical, um, self-pacing. All that is going to be combined to help with uh, the limits of the, 
to help you with the no limit potential of your achievements. Um, the energy is really hardworking and focused and um, not hardworking, but will be hardworking with this energy. That, that's basically what you're getting with this. So um, any work you have to do that day, go ahead and do it. Any advice you need from an employer, from a boss, from someone who's restricting you, that will help you and it will help you with your long-term goals in life, right? Um, Saturn, best known as the taskmaster, brings some challenges though. Sometimes this manifests as health problems in youth, although you may ultimately enjoy increased living long you will live long with this energy but it may have some health problems with the youth um watch out for being too conservative though with this energy because it's like way too practical right so be aware for that um be aware for that be aware of that um your level headedness wisdom and competent for resourcefulness will allow you to achieve your goals without much opposition very focused energy you have a good sense of timing with this energy and be careful not to confront conform to the unnecessary or illogical society values out of desire to stay on top, okay? Capricorns are all about, I say Capricorns because I'm talking about Saturn energy, but it's all about the energy of goals and just focusing on goals. So try to calm down with that, okay? And especially when you have the North Node, it's all about your goals. So just be aware of that energy. So now let's talk about our horoscopes. That was the vibe of the week. And let's get into the horoscopes of this week. And we're going to start with our lovely Aries. And I suggest you doing, you sh of course, you could do your sun, moon, and rising. I suggest your rising because I'm working with whole signs. Okay, so let's get started. Aries, you have Venus in a third house. What does this mean? Um, for you this week, the energy um, is a, it's a good time for short trips especially um, the Gemini, the Venus going into Gemini. Um, enjoying your neighborhood attractions, maybe maybe even like a staycation, um, socializing with siblings. Um, it, it could affect your everyday surroundings. It, you could be more happy with the way it looks or you want it to make it more beautiful and more agreeable. Your social life is gonna pick up with this energy with your friends, maybe even your neighbors. Um, dealing with people in everyday world is going to be very pleasant in life. Like if you go to the grocery store, the mailman, um, people who you see walking their dog all the day, all every day, all that is going to be pleasant. You might find the beauty in the everyday life. Um, what else? And loving your everyday life and every, um, the things that you have in your neighborhood, you will find the love and appreciation with this energy. Um, what else? Um, it's a good time for people um, to tell them how much you love them. The third house is all about communication. So this is a time to communicate your love to others. Um, oh, yeah. And you might be interested in putting art in your neighborhood, in your community, and um, doing some artistic act activities and making your everyday surroundings beautiful. That is what you guys will have. Um, let me pull some tarot. For you guys, and I know you guys love to know that you are first, Aries, so we'll keep it um, that you guys are first. I don't know. Okay, let's do some, ooh, we have a card that came out, Queen of Pentacles, so it's all about your finances and money being stable and really your home too. focusing on your neighborhood your resources that is the energy we get there being on top um not being not overindulging um yes responsibility is what i get for the queen of pentacles so being very responsible so that's what you guys have for your week i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time bye Okay, hello, Taurus placements. This is for you. Not only am I doing your horoscope, but I'm gonna pull a tarot card for you as well. Venus is in your second house. It's a great time for spending and making money and also in beautiful objects, okay? It's a great energy for investing in beauty. Um, this transit is financially good and bad because you can overindulge, okay, in beauty things. So be aware of that, but you can also make money through beauty. So that is the good side of this transit. Also, you'll probably attract money is the energy naturally, okay? People will just be giving you money. So you can also attract possessions and money. Financial opportunities may come up, but difficulties may come from 
um, your tendency to be extravagant. So again, do not overindulge. When it's an influence, it's not practical, <laughs> okay? So learn to be practical. Um, your test will be more on lavish and you will be tested on your budget. So don't think, do things that you cannot afford. Um, you'll be attracted to beautiful clothes and jewelry and art. Um, borrowing money, don't do that during this transit, okay? Investments, again, look into investments with, um, oh, the wasp is back. Look into investments, um, on beautiful things because you can really get that with this transit. Um, what else? Um, could be, um, be careful not to invest money in things um, that deal with your everyday life with this transit as well, okay? Now I've done some of your horoscopes last week. So if you want more of that, please look at the previous video, the April video, not the pick a card. But go ahead and look at that too, because that is uh, available for you. So let's pull a card. Ooh, we have some progression. We have some movement, um, even some travel, because we are talking about Venus and Gemini. That is what we have with this um, card here. And there's movement, travel, um, things moving fast. Hopefully it's not your money, okay? But that is what that card represents, movement, travel, moving forward, a lot coming at you. Um, and um, Gemini uh, energy is very fast. So um, have a blessed week with that energy. And also tomorrow I'm going to do um, the moon energy and horoscopes with that. Okay. So see you guys in the next video, which is tomorrow. Bye. Hello, Gemini placements. This is your weekly horoscope. And we're really focused on the Venus energy. And I'm going to pull a tarot card, but your Venus is in the first house. So um, it's a great transit for you. Um, it enhances your attractive abilities. And remember, Venus is all about what you attract. So um, you're going to be very attractive um, this week. People are going to find you more attractive. So go out and live it up. Okay. Um, beauty treatments and haircuts and fashion will be the focus um, that you will have with this week energy. Um, have fun. Oh, also feminine uh, qualities, whether you're male or female, embrace that. So like spa treatments and all that stuff, J just taking care of yourself. Very um, um, lavish and self-care kind of energy. Um, what else we have? Uh, you're going to have a great desire to relate to others. You're going to be willing to make whatever personal compromises. Um, you won't be into having conflicts with this energy. It's very great. Um, you're going to be very warm, um, very social, very agreeable, um, and avoiding any type of controversy. Okay. Um, it's a great time to be with friends. It's a good time to even take a vacation. Again, we're dealing with Gemini, communicate with friends. We're dealing with Gemini. Um, it's going to be beautiful energy for you during this period. You might attract other people, you're not nece not necessarily like lovers or anything, but just like people are going to be attracted to you, which I said earlier. Um, you, clever energy is what you have. Also be aware to not manipulate people because you're going to be so clever. Okay. So let's see what we have. Gemini's beauty and words too. I wonder like if you're a poet, this is like a great time to have like a poetry reading. Um, we have, uh, the Aquarius in reverse, and um, it's all about not having faith. So be aware of that energy, um, even though it seems like it's positive, but um, your spiritual beliefs and your faith, work on that. Don't have it be imbalanced on your faith and your spirituality. You want to have faith. You want to uh, keep the spirituality up. Even though you're going to be attracting beautiful things, let's keep it humble and let's be positive. Let's not be negative. Um, Gemini's, I wonder what you're going through. I'm going to pull another card with this um, lack of faith energy. And two cards came up. And we have like, you're not doing your calling. You're not, um, they're all in reverse and not feeling abundant. So hopefully this week will bring very positive energy with the attractiveness and work on that. Really just take care of yourself. And um, because the lack of abundance and um, to not know what you're here for, to not know your true calling, to not um, listen to the truth, all that should come this week because we are dealing with uh, Venus and Gemini. So um, work on your faith, work on um, 
Hmm, I want to pull another one because I want a lesson. What is the lesson here with that? Because it seems like it's all future. But let's, even though I do know the lesson on that. Okay, not to focus on what you lost, not to focus on what, and here again, the star has come up again, okay? So it really wants you to know the cards are yelling at you and they're in reverse. Um, so let's focus on alignment. Um, even when it, with this Venus energy, let's focus on the beauty of yourself in and out. Um, and let's keep faith and let's not focus on what you're fighting on and what you're fighting against, okay? Um, yes. Okay. And also too, tomorrow I'm going to go over the moon and we'll really get into your Gemini. So feel free to look for that video, which will be up tomorrow. Okay. See you guys next time. Bye. Hello, cancer place. Hello, cancer placements. Welcome to your horoscopes and your Venus is in a 12th house. It's the house of hidden things, right? Um, so it's time to slow down, smell the roses, connect with nature, reflect on beauty, contemplate on the wonders of the world. Um, you're going to think things that are out of this world is going to be very attractive to you with that Venus in a 12th house. Um, the Venus of this transit is also, um, it highest it's all about being not being selfish okay you're going to give love and not be selfish with people around you um you're going to be in need of caring of others it may be called for you this week um but and rewards of love may not be rewarded but it will be rewarded in the long run but do not don't go around with the energy of like oh i'm taking care of you i am so self sacrificing no do not use that because that's going to bite you in the butt, okay? Um, do not inflict on others, especially the ones that you are helping, on the awareness of how you're not being selfish, okay? Just be giving and the love. know that you will be rewarded eventually. It's going to come out through love, okay? Um, it may be necessary to endure some difficult psychological energies as unresolved problems within your relationships may come to surface with the Venus in the 12th house. The normal effects of this transit should be quite good though. Um, what may be lacking in pleasure will be made up in spiritual rewards. Again, spirituality, beauty and spirituality is what I see. Um, beauty and spirituality, spirituality, the, the Beauty and spirituality, spirituality through technology, um, because we're dealing with that Gemini energy and um, social media is really what I meant. Um, so be aware of that and go ahead and take advantage. Let me pull a card for all my cancer placements. Let's see what we have. We have the Queen of Cups. So it's all positive here. It's all you being yourself, emotionally balanced, emotionally stable, emotionally intelligent, um, also being nurturing, also dealing with spirituality and using your intuition. So embody all that this week. Tomorrow, I'm going to go over the moon and we'll do your horoscopes over the moon because we're dealing with that exciting um, solar eclipse. So let's see you guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. We're okay, Leo placements, this is for you. I'm going to do your horoscopes and then we'll go over some um, tarot for you. And your Venus is in 11th house. So your social life is going to be bigger than ever. You're going to want, you're going to find beauty in dealing with social groups and um, socializing and friends outside of your home. You're going to want to be outside of your home. Um, you're going to be into groups and hobbies and pastimes and activities and um you're gonna find beauty in that especially in something that can deal with a group where they're talking and they're communicating that is going to be very interesting and you're going to be very interested in it so it's all about having a good time having a party um you'll enjoy other people's company they're going to be attracted naturally to you because we're talking about venus and gemini and yours is in 11th house so the groups are going to be attracted to you um naturally any situation in which deals with many people in group settings for example a business um, conference doesn't have to just be a party. Okay. Um, it could be any type of business, any type of social setting. It will work for you. Your ego's energy are low. So you'll be very agreeable with this transit, um, relationships, um, love relationship at this time. And, uh, ones that you had before or ones that are new are going to be very like friendly quality to them and really communicating 
and knowing that you guys are friends. Um, friendship brings love and love brings friendship. That is what we have for you guys. My Leos. Oh, you guys love being that love relationship. <laughs> My Leo placements. Um, let's see what we have for tarot. For you guys we have a transition here so this is a transition this is a change this is going to be to calm waters um also dealing with uh gemini energy also dealing transition with maybe how you communicate transition into um how you are socializing with the world is what you're going to get this week and um your emotions will be calm, so you won't be emotional. It's dealing with logic, maybe even transition on how you deal with logic, maybe transition on writing as well. So um, also, too, a group of writing could be a thing, too, with you guys, okay? So um, tomorrow I will be doing the eclipse and that energy and your horoscope for that, so look out for that video tomorrow. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Okay, Virgo placements. Your, how, your Venus is in the 10th house this week in the sign of Gemini. So it's a time to enjoy your career. It's all about your career and structure and goals for you. You find beauty in that. It's a great time to connect to um, even someone of business, someone, um, your employer, your boss. It's a great time to communicate with them and communication will be clear and smooth. You can also enhance your professional life through creativity ideas. So you might be decorating the office, even if this is not your business, decorating a website, making something in business look better and be beautiful and creative energy. Um, people in authority are favorable, inclined to you with this energy. Relationships is an eh because it's more about your professional life uh, during this energy. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, but relationships, not love relationships is what I'm talking about, but relationships at work is gonna go amazing. It's gonna be smooth, smooth communication. Um, any new relationship which is transit, it could be somewhat maybe an older person is what I get, um, or maybe like a guide figure. Um, this can take in a form of falling in love with your boss, okay? Be aware of the boundaries. If that's not appropriate, don't go there, okay? Um, your tarot card, which I was um, shuffling while I was just talking just now, is the Ace of Wands. So I see creativity happening for you this week. Um, this is the energy of having drive and passion and um, even spirituality being introduced. But more because of your placement, I see that you are going to have new passions and new drive and creativity, okay? So yes, tomorrow I am going to do a video on the eclipse and how it is going to affect you personally. Um, so look out for that video and see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Okay, Libra placements. Your Venus is in a ninth house, a ninth house of uh, expansion and philosophy, okay? Um, knowledge is going to be beautiful for you. You're gonna want to, you're gonna have delight in knowledge with this energy. Um, you're gonna spend time with people of all walks of life, people who are not in the same culture or the same um, country as you. Culturally, you'll be into that. You'll find that very beautiful. Um, what else? Um, you oh maybe even seeing art that doesn't deal with this would deal with your culture things that are out of your culture art wise poetry wise um yes even like i can see like books with art because we're dealing with venus and gemini right and things that are out of this world i'm going to an exhibit that deals with um the art of a book <laughs> That's very detailed, but something with that is just like the energy we get here. Um, you might attend a concert and it's going to be worldly music and um, music that you've probably never even listened to before. That is the energy of what you get. Your uh, experience with love is going to, your love life maybe will show you something new. Um, um, that is the energy of that, communicating something new to you. Um traveling to something new traveling would be great um beauty and travel in a in a vacation not a staycation but a vacation so um that is also you will be attracted at this time to people again who are not in the same culture as you learning about that um it would be the difference that attracts you to them so you will be attracted to people who you're not normally attracted to with this energy um but it's an easy and rewarding transit so um with this Venus energy, 
um, it will be amazing. Let's see how your week is going to go, Libra placements. Let's see what the week is for you guys. Oh, it's all about teamwork and working with others and collaborating with others and learning with others. So be aware of that. It's going to bring you the coin, okay? And it will help you if you are trying to deal with your resources, but really learning and um, also not dealing with the I, but dealing with the team, okay? That is what you guys, Libras, you are great with relationships anyway, but that is what you have. Also, tomorrow I'm going to go over the eclipse and how it's going to affect you. So look for that video tomorrow. See you guys next time. Bye. Okay, Scorpio placements, this is for you. Your Venus is in the eighth house, which is your house, okay? Um, the eighth house of Pluto. Um, this energy is quite subtle, so you may not notice it, especially my Scorpios, because it's going to deal with some sex. If it's dealing with your love life, it's going to be more intense. You're going to have that. Also, you'll probably attract money through a loved one, through a spouse, through a partner, Um um, that's what you can get with this. This is a good time. During this time, your most intimate personal relationships, things that may come up, um, won't be surfaced. Things that may come up through an intimate relationship. Um, the eighth house is also has a strong connection with psychology. So you'll probably learn something through a loved one with psychology. Um, it's about transitions with this planet, but it's also dealing with love. So maybe you will find, you will have a loved one or someone you love give you, um, that will bring a trans transformation. Okay. Um, maybe your sex will be very transcendent is what you're going to get this transit. Um, yes, I said it attracts money through, oh, it could even attract money through a financial bank, but you won't have to do effort. Okay. It's going to come to you from someone else through a partner. And this is a good time, um, to uh, seek a loan as well and financial support. Um, what else do we have? Um, yeah, so it's not, um, love is not going to be surface level, even though Venus seems to be like kind of surface cause it's all about the looks of everything. Um, naturally Venus is an inward level, but, um, aesthetics is more what I think with Venus, but, um, because yours is in the eighth house, you're going to go, want to go deeper. So it's beautiful on the outside, but let's go deeper with this energy. Okay. But let me see what you guys have for the week. Um, we have two cards for you and we have the queen of wands. So this is someone who's confident and very driven. Okay. And very passionate. Someone who's also really good with their spirituality. So go ahead and get in touch with all that. Say what you want to say. Do not be scared to say what you want to say this week. Um, yeah, have the courage is basically what I get with the queen of wands. Okay. You still want to be respectful because it wasn't in reverse. So you're the boss, but you're not disrespectful at the same time. Okay. And then we have the four of pentacles. So it's all about saving your money, saving your coins, saving your resources, um, collecting things and, um, not being too materialistic. Okay. So, um, be aware of that and focus on saving money this week. And, um, yes, that's what we have. I'm going to do your eclipse tomorrow and your horoscope. Explain the eclipse in a horoscope video tomorrow. So look out for that. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Welcome Sagittarius placements. This is your horoscope and I'm going to do the tarot of the week for you. Also, I have done other uh, energy uh, horoscopes and tarot for you of this week. Um, not just week, this week of this month. So go ahead and look at previous videos for that. Um, but yes, let's get on to your horoscope. You have Venus in the seventh house. It's all about love in the air. Okay. The seventh house is all about relationships. So you're going to be all into your relationships, Sagittarius placements. Um, this is a good time to be serious about fun for you, um, and enhance your love life. Um, it's very positive for all love relationships that are intimate to you with your partners, coworkers, even your enemies, okay? They won't be a problem for you this week, okay? It's going to be great. Your ego, their ego, their, what ego? There's no ego here. There's no conflict here. You're going to be very clear with communication in a nice um, pleasant way, an agreeable manner. Um, any professional works, they're going to understand you. Um, no, there, if there is a conflict with anyone in your life, you would like 
to make peace with them. So um, if you have someone you're not getting along with, this is a time to call them and communicate to them. Um, you can even do it through social media because it's a very Gemini, Venus and Gemini energy. Um, but, um, also too, you may be displaying your love on social media, right? That is very Venus and Gemini seventh house. Like, look, my husband, I love him. Look at my boyfriend. I love him showing all these pictures that you may not normally do. Um, but this is all about love and relationships. So, but let's talk about your tarot, your, uh, tarot of the week. Again, we have someone else at this. So if you're looking at your sun, moon, and rising, you have this twice. It's yelling at you. But um, here we go. Oh, I think it was Libra that had this. But this is a working and learning from others, teamwork. Um, there is no I in team. Okay, look and see what others have to offer. Learn from them, experience with them. This is also a collaboration. So again, Venus in the seventh house, there could be a collaboration for you this week. So go ahead and look for that and be open to it. Okay, do not be against it. Say yes with others and working with others especially if it's dealing with your resources and your coin okay so next we have capricorn oh and also i'm going to do your eclipse tomorrow so look out for that and i'll see you guys next time bye hello capricorn placements this is for you this is your horoscopes and after i do your horoscope of the week we're going to do your tarot of the week right so your venus is in a sixth house and i've already discussed where your sun was so look in a previous video for that but the sixth house is all about um first of all venus is not really it doesn't really sit well in a sixth house it's like this is not my natural habitat okay um desires are like lower with this energy it's like okay it's all about being practical and venus is not really practical it's like beauty 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 Ooh, let's enjoy the luxuries and the sixth house is like calm down what are your habits what are your structure what are your what are your goals calm it calm it down you know what i mean let's be very practical here um in your relationships you might find it necessary to confront difficulties that you may have not handled earlier with this transit um, especially with the gemini venus because you'll be able to communicate better sometimes problems and relationships arise and you are not you're not clear on the agreement so be aware of that and with this energy you will be clear with communication it's a good time to discuss those agreements openly um what else when it comes to work this transit works amazingly because uh venus in in the sixth house is just like let's work let's get our goals on capricorns you're gonna love that actually because you're all about your goals um i forgot who i was talking to but now i look down like okay Capricorns, you're going to love this energy, even if you're a Capricorn rising and a Cancer sun, okay? It's going to work for you because it's, it's, it's about you still embodying what you are here for, and that is your goals, okay? So you can focus on that when it comes to work, love, relationship, communicate to them because you're dealing with a Venus and Gemini. Practical manners are more important in all your relationships right now, whether it's work, love, and everything. This is the least romantic transit. Um, you don't want to deal with the real world. You don't, you, you want to deal with the real world and not fantasies. Okay. Um, it's a time for enjoying healthy living as well. Um, you could visit a spa day with a colleague. That can happen with this um, or maybe work out with a colleague and find it to be very beautiful. Um, you may also want to focus on your pets. If you are a pet animal lover, that is the energy for Capricorn Risings. So let's do your astrology, your tarot of the week. We have some cards that just flew out in my hand. Ooh, hanging out with girlfriends is really here and um, spending time with some friends is the energy we have for you this week. And then we have, ooh, um, this is the energy of make a wish, but this is also, so go ahead and make a wish if you, if you want a wish to come true. And this is also the energy of like, look, I have it, I made it. 
Um, I'm excited for the material things that I've collected. So that is what you're going to have. And then lastly, it's also persevering Capricorn placements, persevere, stay strong, do not give up this week. And that is what you have for your week. Um, I'll see you guys. Oh, wait, tomorrow I'm doing the eclipse. So if you want to know your horoscopes on eclipse, look up that I'm going to do that because I want to do it before the week. Um, which is next week. So look up that and see you guys next time. Bye. Aquarius placement. Welcome to your horoscopes. I'm going to do a tarot for you of the week as well. But your Venus is in the, seventh, in the fifth house. Okay. And um, now you're into fun. Okay, Aquarius, naturally, some of you guys are really into fun naturally and socializing, but this is really going to be about fun, childlike energy, the company of children, enjoying that because Venus, again, is not only uh, beautiful things, but socializing and entertaining. Um, you're going to indulge some romance. That's going to be big for you. Um, you'll be inspired by any artistic pursuit. Um, this is a transit. It's really into fun, entertainment and having a good time. Okay, so this week, enjoy that. Um, the fifth house is the house of amusement, creativity, and self-expression. Remember that this lasts up to two to three weeks, okay? Um, activities pertaining to any of these favorable during this transit, oh, love affairs and children, and um, dealing with children, you know, like, hmm, like, like, um, Maybe if you're like a god mom and you don't have kids, take your god daughter or son to a party. You're going to have fun, okay? You're going to be like, this is fun. You know, can you see yourself at Chuck E. Cheese if you don't have kids? Or if you do have kids, go ahead and have fun with your children. Take them to an amusement park or even take them somewhere that deals with Gemini energy because it's a Venus in Gemini. So dealing with uh, maybe someone reading a book out loud, you will have fun during that anything or going to like a poetry reading with your kids or with kids um or maybe the creating one for kids will be the energy that you guys have creativity oh ha uh, hobbies will be very um attractive to you at um with this energy um creative activities are highly favored with this energy love and relationships are very favored with this transit um, others enjoy your energy when you are being exactly who you are. People are going to be attracted to your true self. So there's no need in lying. Okay. Um, what else do we have? I think that is a just, um, you relate to children now, um, is a good time for games and fun. Okay. So let me do your week. Um, also tomorrow I will be doing your, um, eclipse. And your horoscope for the eclipse. So I'll be explaining it and doing a horoscope for eclipse. Let's see what we have. Okay, we have the world. Um, really very Gemini, right? Just the world, literally. And also, too, like the culmination or the ending of something. Something's going to end and be finished and celebrated. Um, that's what you have with that. And then... We have luxuries. So this is going to be a great week for you guys. There's luxuries. There's someone who is like self-made and really enjoying that energy. Very Venus energy. And that is what you're going to get. So um, there is going to be an ending culmination celebration. Um, worldly, literally worldly travels maybe in luxury as well for you guys this week. So I hope you guys enjoyed and see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, Pisces. Welcome to your horoscope. I'm going to do your tarot of the week as well. Um, I have done some previous um, horoscopes for your astrology of April. So look at some previous videos for that. And right now we're going to talk about your Venus. And tomorrow I am doing a video just on your eclipse. So look out for that. Now your Venus is in the fourth house, um, which is in Gemini, which we explained earlier. Now the fourth house is all about the home. So you're really going to be into decorating your home, being at home, making your home beautiful. Try not to overindulge with the lavishness of over decorating stick to the budget um socializing at home uh calling hanging out with your mom or um women at home right like just doing like a girl's night 
at your house is the energy you get with this. Um, it's very peaceful. You're inter um, entertaining guests at your home or maybe even just being alone, um, dealing with family in your home. You can even have like a family uh, Sunday night dinner um, would be great for you. Um, beautifying your home, being creative at your home, writing poetry in your home, reading a book. Making your home very beautiful and then reading a book is very Gemini, Venus and Gemini, right? Um, or writing poetry, um, Venus and Gemini in your home while the home is beautiful. Um, close and warm family um, is with this transit relationship with your parents is with your transit all very positive and um, communicating to them is what you get. Um, you are so communicating and um, dealing with your family will be with this transit as well um you probably will be sensitive with this energy and more in tune with your feelings um so your home is where you want to be with this okay um let me see the fourth house influences your digestive tract. okay um be careful of the things you eat foods and drinks and do not overindulge venus is all about overindulging i know you're at home but do not overindulge with this energy. Okay, let's see what we have of the week for my Pisces. Ooh, let me pull one more. Okay, well, Pisces, of course we have this card, but I'll show you the first one. There's going to be new passions, new... Um, new drive to get things done, new creativity. And I find that you'll be doing it at home, okay? So embrace that energy and welcome it. Also spirituality is with this. Really um, discovering some new spirituality. God is like, come on, let's get this started. That's what we have. There's also new opportunities when it comes to a new home, when it comes to making money, when it comes to starting school. Um, there is That is what you get with this energy, um, the Ace of Coins. Here, God is like, come on, let's start. Let's start this new opportunity of resources, gaining resources of some type with that. And then also we have the High Priestess. This is wisdom and, and, um, and um, intuition mixed together. So it's basically what the Pisces energy is. So you're going to be yourself and you're going to obtain these things. So let it come to you naturally. Use your intuition. Listen to what your what your inner soul is telling you. You're naturally like that Pisces energy and go ahead and the things will naturally come to you that you will be attracting them naturally. Okay. So open up to the universe and think in abundance and manifest. And that's what you have for this week. Also, I'm going to discuss your eclipse and the horoscopes for that. And also I love pulling tarot. So tarot is always involved. Okay. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for staying and watching the whole thing. I love you for that. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any video ideas, I'm open to them. Doesn't mean I will do them, but I am very much open to them. Just let me know and I'll see everyone tomorrow. I think it might be a live video tomorrow. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.